maybe I, I like to introduce our uh, new uh, uh, executive uh, director, yes. Owen Ryan. Uh, Owen uh, started only a few weeks ago, I must say, and uh, he has been fantastic, uh, uh, especially in, in the circumstance of uh, uh, this uh, conference, the opening of the conference with the crash and of the flight uh, MH17. Um, we uh, have uh, 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 Linda Gell, you know, uh, our new uh, uh, President-elect uh, after Friday. And as you probably have already seen, we are a wonderful team because uh, uh, now I understand why we have a president, a, a president-elect, a, a past immediate president, because you see when uh, we have circumstances like that where we are late, we can exchange each other. It's really <laughs> a wonderful team, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> uh, we uh, have a new uh, members elected as well. I like uh, to uh, uh, present uh, Adora, if she's in ro the room. <laughs> a new one, who, by the way, is not really a new one, <laughs> uh, Moro Shesher, if he's there. From Rio, Moro? He's not. Okay, yeah. well, we'll have a lot of <laughs> And uh, uh, Serge Ollier from Ivory Coast uh, uh, will join us. just walked in. Sorry, Francois. Ah. Moro, you are late. <laughs> <laughs> Moro, Moro. <laughs> Sorry. I was just uh, saying that uh, you are a so-called new member. <laughs> <laughs> Elected, uh, Serge Ollier uh, will uh, has been elected as a GC member. Unfortunately, uh, for personal reasons, uh, he has not been able to uh, uh, to be in Melbourne with us. Uh, but uh, I'm glad to say that we will have a representative in the GC from the French-speaking uh, country, since uh, Serge is working in Ivory Coast. Re-elected uh, uh, members are is Ken, Ken Mayer, <laughs> Sergei uh, from Ukraine, he, for reasons that you can imagine, has not been able to uh, travel uh, to Melbourne. Stefano, Stefano Vela, is not there. <laughs> Uh, but everybody knows Stefano, who was a former uh, uh, IS president. Uh, Alex from Uganda. Roy from uh, Singapore. And I will rapidly call the continuing GC member. Uh, Chris is incoming president. Judy Auerbach yeah. from United States, Marina Klein from Canada, yeah. Jens Lundgren from uh, Denmark, yeah. Jürgen Lundgren, Lundgren from, uh, from Denmark, as I said, but he's not present, Jürgen Rockstorff, uh, John, John Idoko from Nigeria. Yeah. Faustine from Tanzania. Yes, yeah, Celia from Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> Luis from Mexico. Horacio from Argentina. I saw Horacio somewhere. Andrew from Australia. Adiba from Malaysia. Suba from India and myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But I, I like uh, uh, to uh, uh, mention and to call the, the outgoing GC members who have been really terrific. I mean, and it has been a pleasure to work uh, with them for, for several years. Cheryl Smith uh, from uh, United States. <laughs> Joel from United States. Peter, Peter Rice, and for Peter it has been a, a lot of emotion this week mm. from the Netherlands. <laughs> Papa Salif So, who is not uh, there in, uh, in, in here, but uh, uh, really P Papa Salif So was uh, with us uh, in, by thoughts. Mm. Uh, Ricardo from Brazil. Mm. Carlos from Peru. Well. Our photographer, Kishi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our immediate past uh, president, uh, Eli Katabira, and the uh, special thanks for Eli. So now I will turn to um, maybe uh, Owen, you say, like to say a few words. Uh, I know that Bernard made the general update, but maybe you like to say a few words. Sure, thank you. Um, uh, thank you everyone for being here and thank you for being members of the IAS. I think this is a really core part of who our mission is, so I, I'd love to have an opportunity. I'm only three weeks on the job. Um, I'd love to hear from a lot of you as to why you value membership. Uh, we, we take that really seriously and to heart, um, how to keep our members and how to make our members <coughs> feel part of this family. So I'd love to for today to be opening that conversation with you about how we do that. And I mean that in a very serious way. So a lot of you will see me in your inbox or on your phone over the next few months trying to get a better understanding about um, how th our membership and the secretary can better reflect you and your priorities in your day to day. So thank you for being here and, and thank you for being members. Um, three weeks on the job, I just have to thank um, our leadership who have made this immensely easy for me. We've become fast friends under circumstances we would rather not go through, but the leadership of the IAS has been nothing less than stellar. Um, I also want to thank the secretariat's staff who have have gone above and beyond to, to uh, perform over the last few days. But more than all of that, I want to thank someone who has been a tremendous mentor to me over the last seven years in the many ways that we've worked together and who has steered the IS Secretariat um, in a very quiet and humble way and never asked for praise and never asked for thank you. And the, he's sitting right next to me. So I'd like to give a round of applause to Mark. Over to you, sir. Well, then, uh, no, I th uh, now I think oh. we are going. Oh, you did the intro. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's already done. Uh, okay. Oh, wow, we're moving quickly. <laughs> this is great already. <laughs> we move to a very important part <laughs> of the meeting, which are the finance, and uh, Anton uh, uh, will uh, um, tell us where we are. Uh, you know that the IS uh, has been going and still have some uh, financial constraints and uh, Owen will tell us uh, about the situation right now. And we'll ask for formal approval. <coughs> yeah, so I've been re-elected treasurer for some reason. <laughs> uh, and so I'm, I, I am going to give you some, the financial outline. Um, uh, and at the moment, although uh, things don't appear so uh, uh, optimistic, we've really got a very good couple of years coming ahead with Vancouver and Durban, etc., and a lot of activities and a lot more involvement from other people in the society. And with um, uh, the new executive director uh, steering the secretariat, it's going to be, I'm sure, uh, a much more interesting for me next year than this year. Um, but I'd first of all like to thank Olivia and the team for 
putting the finances together. And actually, I need now the members' formal approval, not only of these accounts, but also so that we can approve the auditors. So I'll ask you that at the end. Let's just give you the highlights. The IS core is the headquarters. It's how, it's, it's how everything's organized and run. We had a deficit in 2013, uh, which has been covered by the General Reserve. IS conference in uh, Kuala Lumpur was extremely, extremely successful, a fantastic conference. Uh, unfortunately, we made a small deficit. Um, the core of uh, this year, we're going to make a small deficit um, uh, again in running the core. And the, this conference, uh, we the deficit is planned at 450. It's probably less than that because we've uh, we think we've got more registration. So when you look at this, it, it doesn't look so healthy, but things are about to turn around. Uh, just back to the headquarters, uh, we made quite a deficit in running the IES headquarters, but now with the new executive director and a new direction, we are going to um, improve on this. Uh, the audited statements have been approved by the General Counsel, and if you want to see any more, it's in the annual report. Uh, you can see how the, how the core is um, uh, through the conferences, policy, research, uh, partners and, and the Pioneers program. Uh, and obviously you've got copies of these, you can have a look through it uh, if you have any questions for me. It's just the way it's uh, put out. As I say, Kuala Lumpur extremely successful, uh, but we uh, made a small deficit which we um, uh, which we covered from our reserves and the financial report has been approved by the governing council. Here's the budget summary. Again, I can't go through all the detail with you at this uh, meeting, but it's in, you can read it in the annual report. And if you do have any questions, ask me in person, email me, or, or contact me um, through the organisation and we can uh, discuss any of that uh, for you. Um, the headquarters budget, there, there's planned deficit, but we're going to try and make it so that we actually have a balanced budget for this year and not move into 2015 uh, with any deficit so that we can actually baseline the whole cost of the organisation. And I think it's a way we're trying to move forward. So now we're, we're planning ways in which that deficit could be uh, uh, covered so that we, we, we don't move anything into next year's budget. Uh, part of it was that we decided that we would improve the website um, and which needed complete revamping and so part of that deficit comes from money we spent on that. Another issue was that um, we didn't get as many member, new members from the IS2013 conference and also we didn't get some funding from the Ford Foundation um, because they didn't want to support both the conference and priorities so we got 200,000 less from them. So we've had the budget uh, approved but we are making uh, uh, ways forward so that 2014 will end up as a balanced budget and not as a deficit. Here's the sort of expenses, and again, uh, you can see in red at the bottom, as you look at it on, on the bottom left, that we actually uh, um, uh, paid 70000 towards trying to get this IS virtual, which is the website, all organised and sorted out. And it's going, we're going to see a 70 again for next year, because it's a, it's a recurrent cost for three years. Um, income projection, at the moment... Um, uh, we're, we're sort of projecting that things are relatively stable, membership went down a little bit um, and you can see also we have a very strong uh, in, industrial lia liaison um, forum um, and we, we hope that this will also um, be strengthened and improve. So Melbourne, this conference, uh, we, it's based on 5,000 fully paying delegates. That's not how many are here. There's, about, there's over 12,000 delegates here. But we think there's more than that now, so we should increase our income. We did look at the conference very carefully, and we, we, because there were less registrations, we cut a lot of things down, and we cut down on some of the IT, and some of the um, activities we also cut down on in, in, by not, say, for example, um, simultaneously interpreting the opening session in lots of a UN languages and we haven't recorded all of the um, sessions that are there and that, that budget's been approved and in that way we made Melbourne lean and mean so that we're not uh, facing a larger deficit. 
uh, you can see it's, it's, it's all written here basically in terms of the uh, detail and again if you need to have any clarification then please contact me or any of the organisation. Uh, total at the moment the, the deficit looks like 452,000 but we hope that will be less because of increased registration. So we'll, we'll really know about the full budget of this by the end of year. So, uh, all in all, I'd just like uh, uh, to have um, the formal approval of the budget. Um, you don't have to approve the fact that we've made some deficit, you just have to approve the fact that we have a budget uh, that we've written out. So, could I ask for someone to formally approve it from the membership? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. And second, thank you very much indeed. And the auditors, we're going to continue KPMG, so could I have formal approval that, that they continue as our auditors? Okay, and seconded. Okay, great. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Anton. We really have to thank Anton a lot because it's not an easy job. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. I think I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Madam President. I know that many of you know her, but I get few opportunities to introduce a Nobel Prize winner, so I'm going to do it very formally. <laughs> so, uh, Francoise Barry-Sinoussi is the Director of the Regulation of Retroviral Infections Unit at the Institut Pasteur in Paris. She has been involved in retrovirology research since the early 1970s. She received the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2008, together with Professor Luc Montagnier, for her contributions to HIV and AIDS, and in February 2009, she was elected a member of the French Academy of Science. She has been an IAS Governing Council member in Europe since 2006 and took office as IAS President at the closing of AIDS 2012 in Washington, D.C. Madam President. Thank you, everyone. Go down one. That's not my slide. Kill. Go to kill. It actually says kill. Let's go back. And towards the... That one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. You see the cooperation <laughs> between, the, <laughs> between the president. Um, probably Bernard said previously a few words about uh, the different uh, non conference uh, uh, activity of the IAS, and I'm going just to say a few words very rapidly on, on the towards an HIV cure uh, activities because we thought that uh, we should leave some time on a new activity that uh, is uh, just is, is starting in a few months on co infection. So very very shortly, uh, to remember you that the idea of this uh, HIV cure initiative launched in 2011 was to facilitate uh, the scientific discussion and exchanges and collaboration uh, in order to promote and accelerate research towards an HIV cure. Uh, it was, it's uh, also uh, 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 the goal is to promote and to provide leadership in advocating for increasing investment uh, in, uh, in, in that field and also to provide clear and accurate information and dissemination of knowledge uh, to uh, the broader community uh, on this topic of cure. Um, the uh, organization of this initiative, uh, we have uh, uh, an advisory board of stakeholders uh, with representative of uh, the main international organization, uh, public research agency, private funders, uh, representative of uh, communities, representative of uh, resource limited setting. Uh, we uh, uh, have uh, several working groups uh, uh, working on uh, public-private partnership for the industry collaboration group and we'll have a, a meeting today. Uh, we have a group working on uh, cost effectiveness uh, uh, and public health issues and a group also working on social, uh, uh, on so, uh, on, on social science and indeed there are several uh, social science studies that uh, have been uh, uh, starting uh, under the, 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 the advocacy of this group. 
um, we have collaboration with several uh, community uh, representative tag uh, is one of it but ITPG uh, ITPG uh, as well we have collaboration with IVAC collaboration with IAV uh, just starting recently uh, the main achievements uh, you heard in 2012 about the publication regarding the global scientific strategy we are working an annual uh, HIV cure symposium it was a symposium organized here uh, on uh, on Saturday and Friday which uh, again has been quite su successful from what I heard uh, we uh, are organizing uh, 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 several meeting workshop in particular uh, workshop for community we organize a, meet, uh, a workshop for community in Chennai in uh, in India in January 2014 and one was organized here yesterday evening with the communities uh, we are preparing publication one publication on ethical consideration uh, in achieve your research was published in 2000 13. We are now submitting the group working on cost effectiveness is submitting now a review article uh, that I hope will be published in, 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 in very rapidly. Uh, we are also uh, together with AMFAR and uh, AVAC uh, working on annual resource uh, tracking and uh, there is a, a, a policy paper prepared also in collaboration with IAV on that topic. So uh, this is just to say what I already mentioned, the, the Cure Symposium organized this week. The next step for the future, uh, the next step will be a community uh, satellite, satellite workshop organized with IAV at the HIV R4P conference in Cape Town in October. Um, think tank uh, meeting to uh, uh, talk and discuss about predictive uh, biomarkers. Uh, we uh, are planning uh, to uh, update the global scientific strategy uh, together with a group of scientists. Uh, we uh, uh, are working on global database uh, for HIV uh, research and cure. We will continue to organize community training workshop uh, in, in, in Vancouver at the conference also in Durban and uh, uh, it has been accepted uh, by the advisory board uh, to uh, continue to organize HIV cure symposium in 2015 and 2016 both in Vancouver and Durban. So it's more or less what I wanted to uh, say as short as possible. If you have questions later on I will be pleased uh, to answer to your question. We can move maybe now rapidly to uh, a, a short presentation by Marina Klein on the new uh, co-infection activity. Thank you very much, Francoise. I'm not going to get up, and I don't have any slides, but it's a real pleasure to be able to introduce a new uh, initiative uh, of the IAS and, um, with my uh, co-chair, Jürgen Rockstro. I think it's quite clear that effective antiretroviral therapies have really dramatically changed the landscape of HIV infection among those who can have access to treatment. And as a consequence, we are seeing the emergence of other co-infections uh, increasingly being important in driving mortality and uh, morbidity in uh, HIV-infected persons. Particularly, this is true with viral hepatitis, hepatitis C and B, um, tuberculosis, and human papillomavirus. And in addition, these are the same. These infections particularly affect our key affected populations and, and, and people who inject drugs, uh, men who have sex with men, and people of resource limited settings. So. Um, it's a kind of uh, important time that we turn our focus to these, we felt, and the, in particular because of the range of new treatment options that are emerging. I think we've heard about these at this conference and very exciting developments in, in treatment, in particular for hepatitis C with direct acting antivirals that have the potential to cure the vast majority of people infected if they have access to them. Uh, in addition, we had some very exciting news about tuberculosis therapies and, and going forward there'll be new strategies for human papillomavirus. So we feel that we can turn a lot of the experience of the IS has, has built over the last 25 years to address HIV and the questions around access to care and diagnostics and treatments 
two co-infections and bring together people who are interested in this area to bear on this, these questions. Uh, and as a goal, we will uh, initiate uh, our activities focused on viral hepatitis because of the tremendous uh, exciting uh, new treatments and the urgency to get these out uh, to people who need them. And we think we, IS can play an essential role in advocating for both driving a research agenda that's focused <coughs> on all the key affected populations, to advocate in particular for access uh, to diagnosis and evidence-based treatment for all co-infected persons worldwide, uh, particularly because the costs of these drugs and diagnostic tests uh, are going to be enormous, that we need to uh, really use lessons learned from HIV infection to bear uh, in resource-limited settings. Uh, and to do this, we, um, we uh, have already started in this conference, and Jürgen, uh, together with Greg Dorr, chaired a really uh, successful pre-meeting uh, and co-infection uh, that um, uh, really started the conversation and uh, and we wish to continue these activities in the upcoming conferences, really integrate uh, uh, viral hepatitis into our meetings and in addition um, have uh, assemble groups of people who are interested and uh, stakeholders in this area in, in some kind of roundtable discussion so that we can really move the agenda forward. We think this will be a model that we can then apply in subsequent years to other important co-infections, particularly uh, tuberculosis uh, f towards the Durban conference and following that to human papillomavirus and other sexually transmitted infections. Of course, we will continue to do work in hepatitis as we go forward in every year uh, and, and so on. So really invite any members uh, uh, in uh, the IS uh, community who wish to be uh, know more about this initiative or even participate in, in, in this initiative or have input into this initiative to contact us because we would welcome uh, broad support and involvement. Thank you. Owen, do you introduce uh, Chris? I do. The, the president's uh, former past and present get the distinct pleasure of having me formally <laughs> introduce them today. It's like the one perk, so be a president. Um, so uh, Chris Byers, you all know, is professor of epidemiology, international health, uh, behavior, and society at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health in Baltimore, Maryland. He serves as director of Johns Hopkins training program in HIV epidemiology and prevention science, and is founding director of the Center for Public Health and Human Rights. He is the associate director of the Johns Hopkins Center for AIDS Research and the University Center for Global Health. He will take office as IAS president at the closing of AIDS 2014. Chris. Thanks so much, Owen. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we, uh, we really launched the Key Affected Populations Working Group uh, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and uh, so it's just been a year. And uh, I think we, I think we uh, have uh, achieved some of those goals. I want to very briefly share that with you. Um, before I do that, um, let me thank some very critical people. First of all, from the IAS Secretariat, we have been very ably supported and staffed by Manoj Kurian. Where is Manoj? Is he here? There. Ah. Thank you, Manoj. And I must uh, thank my co-chair, uh, a former member of the IAS Governing Council, and now, of course, uh, Ban Ki-moon Special Envoy for HIV-AIDS in Eastern Europe and Central Asia, Professor Michelle Kazachkin. Mm. As a general rule, if you want to get something done, uh, it's a good idea to partner with Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say. Uh, and it really has been an honor uh, to work with you, Michelle, and, uh, and just a pleasure. So um, one of the things that we said that we would try and do in terms of key affected populations uh, was really use the platform of the IAS conferences uh, to really address key affected populations, to do a better job about integrating these uh, critical components of the epidemic into uh, the conferences, to move away from basically pre-conferences specific to each group and really make sure that the conference program uh, was capturing and addressing uh, all of these issues. So uh, how are we doing? Yeah, I mean, did anybody go to the plenaries today? No one left behind. I think it really, uh, th that was the goal. Um, Daisy, was that an amazing talk? How many of you heard that? I mean, just really breathtaking. So um, 
that's a critical part. I think uh, in addition to that, uh, we have uh, the Melbourne Declaration. Uh, and the Melbourne Declaration, hopefully all of you as IAS members uh, have signed on to it. Um, please uh, continue to do that. We want it to live uh, obviously beyond the conference. Uh, we really feel that the Melbourne Declaration uh, is an expression of all of our shared belief uh, that stigma, discrimination, uh, criminalization really has no place uh, in the HIV response. We have some other more, uh, I would say, kind of tangible products uh, to share uh, coming out of uh, coming out of this conference. One, uh, a very important one that I'd like to, to highlight is uh, the white paper that we have released on uh, treatment for key affected populations. And this was a collaboration uh, of the treatment working group, uh, which of course has been very ably uh, led for the IAS by Stefano Vella and by Joop Lange. And uh, we, we collaborated together over the last year uh, really to try and address the treatment barriers, the treatment issues, uh, and also to engage our community partners in, in the effort to expand uh, access. And I'll just say uh, that in addition to Yopes Institute, the Amsterdam Institute for Global Health, uh, that our other partners on this have been GNP Plus, INPUD, the International uh, Network of People Who Use Drugs, NSWP, the MSM Global Forum, and De Sante, Amphar, and uh, Gate, the Transgender Alliance. Uh, so really, uh, I think an extraordinary group of individuals and partners, and I'm happy to say uh, that a scientific paper, a shorter paper based on the white paper, uh, is already out in JIAS. Uh, the first author is Ian Grubb, um, who was previously uh, uh, worked with Michelle at the Global Fund, and, uh, and it is kind of painful to say, but also uh, an honor uh, uh, that um, Yop is one of the uh, one of the co-authors on that paper. An additional advocacy effort, along with the Melbourne Declaration, and one that we think is really important, is that the IAS has released a, a code of conduct for health professionals, and this is really an attempt to say uh, that we we want our members, we would like the IAS uh, and all of its partners to lead on this concept that that uh, discrimination in healthcare and stigma and exclusion of key affected populations in healthcare settings uh, really is unacceptable. Go against the ethics of all of our professions, nursing, medicine, and allied professions. And I really hope that all of you will look at the IAS website, uh, read through the content of that, uh, sign on to it, endorse it, uh, distribute it among your, your networks and colleagues. Um, we, we would like to see it actually hanging in offices and, and, uh, and making clear to people when they come into healthcare settings that this is a place where uh, intolerance is not tolerated. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. I just want to very briefly uh, thank some of the donors to the Key Affected Populations Working Group and the donors who have joined on in support of this initiative. Uh, that includes the Ford Foundation, Open Society Foundation, AMFAR, the Foundation for AIDS Research, uh, Mac AIDS Foundation, and MSD. And uh, we're, we're, we're really encouraged uh, that, that so many of, of the donors and supporters in the field really agree with us that this is important. Um, this is my check to see if, the, if I've left anything out. Uh, yes, a guidance note on the use of antivirals for prevention in the context of universal access to treatment. Um, and we did, uh, I think, a very important initiative uh, uh, in a call to action to overcome HIV in conservative social settings. Uh, that, um, if those of you who are interested in the details of that really uh, want to speak um, with Minaj. So we have uh, plans to continue this work, obviously. Um, we're going to do a number of in-country consultations. We are planning on uh, doing, I think, the next one with Michelle and myself and IAS and a number of other partners uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, we think that that is very appropriate. Uh, as, as probably everybody in this audience knows, one of the uh, very first actions on the first day of the Russian occupation of Crimea was to stop methadone. Um, you'd think that you'd have other things to do when you're starting an occupation, um, but so we really want to address that. And I would just highlight that there is a terrific session tomorrow uh, on uh, the regional session on Eastern Europe and Central Asia. It's also going to include some video testimony of, uh, of former methadone patients in Ukraine who now, of course, are struggling with healthcare access. Okay. Oh, sorry.
So that session is tomorrow uh, in the regional session, Eastern Europe and Central Asia. Uh, and as I was saying, um, there'll be a, a very powerful video uh, from former methadone patients uh, in Crimea uh, addressing their treatment access issues. So I think we've, we've had a good first year. Uh, we've uh, been able to achieve some of the goals that we laid out for you in Kuala Lumpur. And, uh, and we hope that, that uh, throughout this conference, you'll agree uh, that key affected populations and the issues that pertain to, to them uh, have really been mainstreamed into the conference. And that was, of course, one of our primary goals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, so now we have time for discussion. Oh, you already spoke, right? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay. Oh, not doing well, you did it. Please oh, you come did. to the oh. microphone. Uh, uh, let's do it. Out. Introduce yourself. Please. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nadia Samagudu. I'm a pediatrician working in Nigeria. I wanted to comment on, I think, Linda's um, presentation from earlier on the CIFA and pediatric HIV research. Um, I've been waiting all this time to comment on that. So um, I, 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 I have looked at the CIFA and how it is um, uh, awarded. And I really think that even though there's some mention of targeting grants for researchers, young researchers in resource limited settings. Um, I did notice that some of the awardees were actually from resource rich countries, but are working on projects in resource limited countries. I really think that you should target some grants to resource limited settings where the researchers actually are from and live and work there, as well as uh, um, being able to compete for these grants because it b makes it a very difficult milieu in which to compete when you are competing with people who are working outside. So I really, really <coughs> passionately want to appeal to you as you are looking at research agenda and, and, and grants for pediatric HIV to really strongly consider that. Thank you. Thanks, and thank you for raising it. I, you know, I think you hit on, on a great point. Um, the, the, perhaps I will just back up to say that there was a very broad group looking at all of the, um, the applications, and that certainly came in as a consideration. I'm, I'm pleased to say that the vast majority live, work, and are citizens of low-income countries. Um, one or two have come in because we really felt that the research was important and and would you know move our agenda forward. Uh, the one that comes to mind is the bubble CPAP one, which you know, I, I, admittedly, uh, the recipient is is a young American. Um, uh, but the work really seemed very critical for our field. And so there has been a bit of a balance, but I totally get your, your, um, you know, your thinking around this, and, and I endorse it. And certainly going forward, that is our spirit. Um, and we you know, continue to balance regionality as well. One of the issues that came up is the vast majority of the applications came from Africa. Again, perhaps not unexpectedly, but we do want to see region. And so I'm pleased to say that in, in the last round, we were able to award a, 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 an application from Southeast Asia, which I think is really important. So, so continue to send them. This kind of feedback is critical, um, and we will uh, you know, look forward to much more of this and more to award in the future. Yes, please. Oh, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Um, my name is Isaac. I'm from um, an organization, international organization called New Earth Nation. And um, the last few days has been very eye-opening for me and confronting at the same time. Um, I'm a political scientist slash activist slash concerned human being. And um, I suppose my question to you guys is, Maybe I'll first start by saying, when I, when I saw your budget and I saw that there was a deficit for $450,000 for this conference, that I find appalling, absolutely appalling. I mean, 
just as an example, the US gave $3 billion to Israel last year, and we can't get this together. I want to know, as an international community, when we're going to start standing together and saying enough is enough. There is millions of people with AIDS all over the world. The genocide that's happening in Palestine, the rubbish that's happening in the Ukraine is all beside the point. And I'm appalled to say that I am a media representative looking at the paper for the last two days, international news. This stuff should be on the front page of every media in the world. And instead, we're talking about conflict, war, death, destruction. 289 people died on that plane, some of which were my friends. I flew out of Amsterdam two weeks ago to see my rabbi in, in, in um, Amsterdam. I could have been on that plane. I have people in, in Amsterdam who are directly affected by this, and I think it's appalling that we're, that we're separating the issues. I mean, I think... I think I don't know. I just want to get what the feeling is. I mean, I've talked to a few people over the last few days, many people actually, and I just want to get a gauge of how concerned people are by this and if people are willing as a scientific community, as a political community, as an activist community, when we're going to start standing together and saying enough is enough, I don't, I think it would be a shame if we had to go on strike, but why not? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, good afternoon. My name is. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh yes. I'm sorry. No, please. No, go ahead, please. Uh, good afternoon. I'm sorry I joined you late. I have just been running around I'm helping Howard University. Uh, I just thought it was important after making my first international AIDS conference in 2012. I thought it was important to make sure that there was follow through because what happens there's a lot of excitement in the air when events like that take place, but there's never any follow through. So Howard's been doing a great job. We're celebrating this year their fifth annual international HIV AIDS on stigma, and uh, looks like Douglas Brooks is going to be our keynote speaker. Ryan White's mother was our keynote speaker last year. But one of the things I get really concerned with when I come to conference with all the HIV work I've been doing since I left the pharma industry is that access to safe drinking water, I mentioned that to some of your representatives at the last conference in DC, that's a major problem in the developing world. So I mean, it's great to have these great drugs and interventions, but what are we doing and why are we spending all this money if people don't have access to safe drinking water? I mean, why isn't Procter & Gamble with their product Pure, I was involved with Sister Cities International. That product Pure helped me a lot when I was doing HIV work between the Sister City project I put together between Long Beach, California, Mombasa, Kenya, when we were there bringing out HIV awareness, but uh, can Procter & Gamble be present in Durban? But safe drinking water, can that be addressed in 2016? Thank you so much. Thanks for your comment. I, I, I would just say that we're, we're very much aware that there are, of course, global health issues and that the integration of the HIV movement with some of the, some of the global health concerns like safe drinking water that you raised is, is part of the agenda for the future. We're going to have, uh, and we're putting together a, uh, a special session at our uh, treatment pathogenesis conference in Vancouver in 2015 on just this topic on global health and HIV. So we're with you and we're thinking about it. Um, to the Previous speaker, uh, let me just say, first of all, of course, we we uh, we want to share condolences for your loss. Uh, you know, this this is a, a community that's grieving. I think I can speak for everyone, uh, certainly in, in the in the IAS and the Governing Council, uh, that what we really have been struck by in the aftermath of this. Uh, it's a tragedy, but also very much a crime, um, is the incredible way that, that uh, the community has come together with, with renewed resilience and effort around trying to, trying to make a difference. I think that, that that has infused the whole spirit of this conference. I think it's going to stay with all of us. Uh, and, uh, and I think, uh, you know, the, these are losses that, uh, that we have to turn into renewed activism and, and energy. So thank you for your comment. Yes, please. Hello, um, my name is Sven Robinson. I work with the Global Fund. Uh, I coordinate our engagement with parliamentarians at the Global Fund. And I just wanted to make two brief points. First of all, just some very positive and encouraging news out of the Global Fund in terms of the, um, the new funding model uh, on the, in the context of the uh, key affected populations. And Chris, it's great to see the leadership of the IAS on that. Our former uh, executive director, Michelle, as well. Wonderful to see his involvement uh, in that. Um, under the new funding model, the country 
industry dialogue, the concept papers, we're really making an effort to reach out and ensure that in country, the voices of key affected populations, in fact, are heard and that resources are targeted more effectively to those communities. That was the first point I wanted to make, a kind of a positive point about what's been happening. But also, secondly, just a, uh, a reminder that some of the key uh, players in in dealing with key affected populations, in fact, are elected representatives, are parliamentarians. They can be a force for good. They can also, as we know tragically in countries like Nigeria, Uganda, uh, Russian Federation and elsewhere, be enormously destructive. But just to let you know that uh, there are many parliamentarians who are prepared to work with you in this. Uh, I've been involved in a, in a, a sort of a side conference uh, for the last couple of days uh, that's co-hosted by the Interparliamentary Union. Union, mm -hmm. involving parliamentarians from around the world. This was one of the key themes. So you should know we're prepared to work with you. The Interparliamentary Union is an important partner in this, uh, in identifying champions in country that can facilitate your work, uh, and also talking about strategies about how we can ensure that um, uh, we break down some of those myths and those barriers uh, that, the, uh, that the other politicians are spreading uh, that are so destructive in our fight uh, in this area. So so you have partners in parliamentarians, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so it's much. Really great to hear. Uh, Stephen Ellis, uh, a clinician, San Francisco physician. Just a real quick technical point. There was no uh, continuing medical education accreditation available for this year's meeting, apparently. It's kind of with the staff of I don't know how many burning through $7 million a year push, uh, pushing apparently in staff salaries for IAS. Uh, hopefully that'll get addressed in the future. But that's kind of basic when you put on a medical meeting. Would I to answer to that? <coughs> but now? Yeah, so this year we had a particularly difficult um, situation around getting our CME. We, we approached the European um, accreditation and, and the US accreditation and uh, the Australian accreditation and found that actually they did not have a harmonized approach to this. So this was a challenge we only found out about in the very late uh, or, or uh, very close to the conference, but definitely it's a critical thing that we must address. We have always tried to do that with the previous conferences, and we we've taken note of that. We, we will have to really prepare well in advance to see that people get CME. Yes, please. Hi, my name is Juliet Reed. I'm from UK, originally from Uganda. I want to know what the response um, is from the IAS to um, punitive laws which are being enacted in um, several countries and whether you plan to have a strategy to respond to such laws which are taking us back in terms of the response to HIV AIDS. Yeah, so, well, thank you very much for that. So the first thing I would say is everything that I told you about, about the key affected populations and the No One Left Behind campaign is, is a part of our response. We're a, you know, we're a, we're a professional body in HIV, we're scientists, and so we're trying to bring as much as we can the evidence and the science to bear uh, on these challenges. Um, I think the second thing to say, which is really important, is that we have done uh, some targeted advocacy. We put out statements uh, around these governments, and we also have done some more quiet advocacy. Uh, Francoise Barry Sinousi uh, did a personal letter to uh, the Nigerian foreign minister around that. Uh, the acting foreign minister at the time uh, around the Nigerian law uh, because that person is a former member of our governing council. Um, and, uh, and we will continue to do that. Uh, an important part of it as well is advocating for health professionals who've been affected by these laws. Many of you may know the case uh, of the Ugandan nurse who is currently in prison uh, on what is clearly uh, not a, an HIV transmission case. And, uh, and so we've done letters and advocacy around that issue as well. Uh, that's always been a part of who we are uh, and what we do, and that's going to continue. 
Chris, can I, can I just please? I just want to add one quick point. I, I'd like to make sure that we also have kind of a both ways dialogue. And you know, as a secretary in Geneva, it can be difficult for us to always know what our members are experiencing, where you work. And so please know that we are always available to receive information in real time. We want to be responsive to events as they happen on the ground. So, so please always keep us informed as you need us to kind of, as a whole scientific voice, respond. Yes, uh, in the middle and then... <laughs> Thank you. Hello, my name is Alexandre Dier. I'm a postdoc in uh, Quebec City, Canada. Um, my question will be very naive and maybe a bit personal compared to the others, but I was wondering what I could... Uh, I'm very interested in the mission of IIS, and I was wondering what, would be the, what I could do as a postdoctoral fellow or as a junior scientist for IIS, what are the priorities, the needs uh, of this association, and what, expect, uh, except of doing my work as a postdoctoral fellow, what I could do, what would be your advice? Uh, okay. It's many things that you can do, by the way. I guess. Uh, it's, uh, it's for you also to select, uh, if you like, as a volunteer, to participate <coughs> to some of the activities at the IAS, either as part of uh, the organization of the conference, where we always need volunteers when we organize conferences uh, like this one in Melbourne or the next one in, in Vancouver, or uh, if you like to participate to non-conference activities uh, according to the different priorities that you uh, have heard today, like HIV cure, like co-infection, like pediatrics and uh, adolescents, like uh, key affected population. So it's it's really depending on you what you like to to help and to do for the IAS. You can always then contact the secretariat and and uh, see and discuss with them. Uh, it depends also of the time that you can spend on, on it uh, as a, as a scientist. Uh, I, I I think. Uh, probably you cannot spend too much time either. <laughs> oh, I think uh, because it can take a lot of time. Yeah, yes, I can tell you. <laughs> I guess, but no, I but think... Thank you for proposing. This is really great, by the way. Hello. I'm William Bright from Liberia, a new member of the IAS. I am thinking, a winner in, how am I going, to, and I, first of all, I work for LGBTI community in my country, and LGBTI issues are a very serious issue in Liberia. All right, I'm thinking, how am I going to use this opportunity as being a member of the IAS to impact the lives of key populations in my country? Well, I think as uh, as Francoise was saying, we're we're of course so welcoming and, and open to people volunteering and getting engaged. It sounds like uh, the key affected populations working group is uh, is a natural home for you. Um, so uh, so please follow up with with uh, the IS secretariat. Um, we uh, we intend in the next year uh, to do some work around the code of conduct for health professionals uh, in a sub-Saharan African country. We're working out the details of that, um, but uh, you know, keep in touch with us, and uh, we certainly would 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 like to engage you. We know that that Liberia and West Africa in general is an area where there's a lot of concern for LGBTI communities. So, thank you. I think Bernard wanted to add just one thing. Oh, yeah. I think that um, along the same lines, and I think this goes for all the members, as I mentioned, we now would really like to strengthen our social media platform. And, and this is a real opportunity for some of you to go in there to, to put some cases, some stories, personal life stories, do some blogs, and, 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 and even uh, also join some of the working groups uh, that we put together on the various issues. So there is a lot of opportunity. It's really encouraging to see that mm -hmm. you can be available. And as Francois said, there is so much work to be done. So mm -hmm. many hands will be welcome. Okay. Stefano. Stefano. You have a question. Thank you. No, it's not a question. It's, uh, <laughs> I take an opportunity because, because of the beautiful Clinton talk, yeah. we had to reschedule also a very important session on global health, on from HIV to global health, which actually is something that 
you, we yes. all need to have in our mind where, how this model can be, you know, switched and used for the, the, for the health, to fight other inequalities. And this session has been rescheduled. So I'm, I'm taking the opportunity just to ask you to look at the, it will be tomorrow. Richard Horton will be there, the editor of Lancet, and other very high level speakers. So that was just an announcement, I'm sorry. But because you are here, and I think that this is a very interesting, that goes, a session that goes beyond all we did, and it's uh, maybe the future, I would like you to invite to look at the uh, announcements and come to this session, particularly the IES Governing Council members, that will be very welcome. I'm very sorry for this interruption, but I think it was no, to, but you, you to serve, right. because yeah, I right. think it's so a session that it's important. It's no, actually, this is, I'm um, sorry again, I, I don't know. I don't know the location, and I don't know the time. It depends. It's final. But, but, sorry, but, you know the but day. it depends. You know the day. It depends from Megan. Megan is the, the one, Megan War, she is the one that, you know, is the architect of this. Um, no, I, I, I guess probably it would be some announcement. And yeah, there uh, would be an announcement. This is what I was saying. Look at the, the announcement. You have to look at the screen. And you will, it will, be you will find it. You will find it for sure. It will be tomorrow. But they are now trying to find a place. Maybe this room, maybe. But uh, you, you need to check. You need to check. No, if no, you are, if, don't if you are, say anything. Don't ask people to come no, in this no, room no, tomorrow no. if it's not Just, there. If you are interested, <laughs> look carefully. You will find it. <laughs> Thank you, Stefano. Thanks, because uh, it's a very important topic. You are right, so it's, uh, it will be nice if uh, uh, people, uh, every members and GC member could be there. It's a way to move forward, to move forward uh, for HIV, but for global health. HIV can be a good example. We can have you know, some lesson from HIV and HIV also can learn from other uh, regarding other uh, health issues. I think we have to move on that direction today. Any other comments, questions? I cannot see anybody in the room. If not, uh, uh, we can I would like to say maybe a few, uh, few uh, closing uh, remarks. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, all the, the, the speakers, all the members who are in present in the room, uh, all the speakers uh, today at, during this session. I would like uh, to say that uh, of course, uh, we have more or less a strategic plan for the coming years at the, uh, at the IAS, and uh, we discussed that at the Governing Council we are not going to change uh, tomorrow uh, our, uh, our strategic plan because uh, uh, we have activities, as you have seen, besides the conference that uh, are already, I think, on the right track corresponding to the priority in the future field of HIV and beyond uh, in the field of co-infection and so on. Um, I would like really to say, and you have seen with the presentation of Anton, uh, that we have to consider the, the economical situation, the financial situation. Uh, you probably uh, understood that uh, the IS went through a difficult uh, uh, period. Uh, so uh, now we uh, are, I think, on the right track for the coming uh, months and years. Uh, we uh, are on the right track with a new uh, dynamic energetic uh, ED. <laughs> Indeed. He knows already what he has to do. <laughs> <laughs> including starting to speak French, and he already did. 
I, I can Mon testify. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, will have to learn a lot of language because we are an international society. It's one of the first things I told him uh, during the interview. Uh, you know, Owen, that uh, we are not only American, we are international. Uh, but uh, he understood immediately the message, so he's starting uh, to, to do his best on this. Uh, no, I'm joking a little bit because uh, we have, you know, according to uh, the difficulty of this situation today, I'm just trying to make the atmosphere a little bit better. Uh, we uh, are, are, are all uh, uh, in, a, in a very emotional uh, period, I, I must say, and uh, I totally agree with uh, what has been said before, uh, enough is enough. Uh, and we are, uh, Chris mentioned that, we, we are a community uh, of, uh, we're an example, mm -hmm. uh, I think, among the communities, really, to be all together. We don't remember whether we are scientists, uh, whether we are doctors, nurses, uh, people living with HIV, uh, uh, gay or, or sex worker or IV drug user. We don't care. We are a community and we are uh, working together for the same objective, which is the most important thing. And uh, we have a voice. We have a voice also for uh, the others. Uh, we have a voice for government and we have a voice to say enough is enough. Uh, it's I like to finish to um, thank uh, several people, teams. Uh, I didn't mention before, but uh, for the HIV cure uh, initiative and activities running today, I really like to thank uh, several persons, but in particular Anna Laura Ross. Uh, unfortunately, she's not in the room, but Anna Laura has been wonderful. Uh, to, uh, to, to continue the activity around HIV cure. Uh, we are lucky to have Rosanne in the Secretariat and uh, uh, my own assistant, uh, Olivier, who is in the room, uh, has been very, very uh, supportive, very helpful also for these activities and also for my presidency at the IS. And I would like really to thank Olivier. Special, special thanks to all the IS staff. I'm not going to say names. And my final thanks is for a man. <laughs> a man who has been wonderful keeping quiet <laughs> despite very difficult situation trying, you know, to uh, remain optimistic in all occasions. <laughs> My really thanks to, uh, to Bernard. Bernard. <laughs> he agreed to be the acting director uh, since uh, the beginning of the year and uh, really has been a wonderful person, a wonderful human being trying to solve a very difficult situation uh, in direct contact with the uh, uh, governing council uh, members. Uh, also, of course, taking care about the situation to make sure that uh, everything will uh, move on, both the conference and the non-conference activities. So our big, very big thanks to Bernard. Thank the staff. I got the message from Megan. <laughs> you know, just to show that we are efficient, it will be here, 203-204, at 1 tomorrow. Special session on From HIV to Global Health. You know, they are very efficient at the office. And uh, uh, we have, uh, as a member of Governing Council, here. someone very good for communication, as you can see, Stefano. <laughs> <laughs>
Just, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just before we close, um, I just want to acknowledge that this uh, will be the last IES members meeting uh, in which Francoise uh, will be serving as our president. Uh, and I, I think I can say for the entire community uh, that really her leadership has been extraordinary. Uh, she's been absolutely...